from creating product documentations and plans to building a full stack application like this and deployed onto Vercel using this one single tool called Trade.ai solo mode, where we can be able to have a all-in-one context engineer that not only has the ability to write the product requirement documentations, but also has the ability to write the code, be able to execute the plan, and be able to also be able to run the code itself inside of his terminal tab, and also be able to test the applications in his IDE browser, as well as integrating with third-party applications like Superbase, AI, and payment services, and finally is able to integrate with Figma designs and be able to use any designs of our choice to implement the application itself. So in this video specifically, I'm gonna show you how you can be able to take a single prompt all the way to building a full stack application like this, where we can be able to select the meals that we want and be able to place the order and be able to view the order histories and even changing the payment methods and viewing the payment histories, all using this one single tool called Trade.ai, which help us to build this entire applications front end, back end, and the entire database, all using just simple natural language here. And by the end of this, not only you get the full code for the entire project that it built, but you also have the ability to change any models you like, and be able to have the ability to make any modifications. So I can be able to use a selector here to be able to select any elements and be able to add it to the chat to tell exactly where you want to change and how you want to change that. And I'm going to show you this entire process step by step. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so to get started, first thing first, we navigate to trade.ai and here is their landing page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download trade onto our desktop. So here I'm just gonna click on download trade. Once we download it, here is what it looks like after we open the application. So we're just gonna follow this onboarding process to get started, choose the desired theme. So like deep blue, light themes, here we can also change different languages. For example, we can just stick with English for now. And here we're just gonna click on continue. So here I'm just gonna import the configurations. So because I'm using VS Code a lot, so I'm just gonna import from VS Code as my IDE for the configuration that I wanna import from. So here I'm just gonna click on import from IDE from VS Code. And once everything looks good, we're just gonna click on login with Trey. So after I log in with Trey, this is what the IDE looks like. So in that case, let's try to explore the IDE first. So here you can see that we have our file explorer where we can be able to open and be able to see all the files that we have inside of this project. Now, we also have our source control, right? Just like how we have it in our VS Code searches. We can also be able to preview files. We can also be able to look at the extensions that we have, the available, and also the install ones as well. Now, because for this demonstration, the main goal here is to demonstrate the solo builder. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is gonna upgrade to the pro version, which only give us like option for $3 per month for the first month but we get unlimited access for the advanced models, right? So here you can see I have already paid for that. And here you can see it's upgraded to the pro version, which have the 600 premium model fast requests, as well as the unlimited model for the slow request and the advanced model request, which is a really good, right? $3 per month, I couldn't explain more. Um, so here you can see I have upgraded to the solo mode. I can be able to switch to the IDE to the solo mode here, which you can see the layout looks completely different. So here you can see that on the left, we have our solo builder. So that's gonna be our prompt window where we're gonna work with the solo builder here to build our applications. And then here on, in the middle here, you can see that we have different tabs. So we have our documentations, right? So doc view, when we start to give a prompt for the planning, it's gonna write the doc first, right? And then here we also have our browser. Let's say we're going to have it to code something, right? So it's gonna code a web applications. It's gonna code right here in this window. And once it's coded, we can be able to view the application live in the browser section here we can also be able to see the figma designs we can also be able to have the integrations with like superbase or ai services and so much more right uh here you can see we can also integrate with the payment system as well so very cool so in that case what i'm going to do is here in the chat window on the left what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste the prompt for the planning so basically the goal is we're trying to build a meal delivery subscription web applications for vancouver customers with these features and here you can see these are the fuser flows right and here we also have a key features for what are the features that we're going to have for this application then we also have the business rules the success metrics Pretty much that's all, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to send this request and we can here, we, you can see that the solo builder here uses the Sonnet 4. And here I'm just gonna send this request. All right, so after we send the request, you can see that the solo builder here basically starts to build the two things. So one is the product requirements and the other one is the technical architecture. So let's take a look at the product requirements first. So here you can see that this is the product requirement doc, which shows in the doc tab. And here you can see that we have our title, 
product requirements, core features, which we have our user roles. So we have our guest users, registered users, and subscriber users, right? So here we have the registration methods, the core permissions and such. There's also the feature modules, right? We have our landing page, what are pages that we have for this application, right? And then we also have our page details. So in terms of the landing page, what are the modules we have? What are the services, right? What are the things that we're gonna offer? And in terms of registration flow, right? What are the things we need for maybe the plan uh, selections where a user can be able to choose like either six, eight, 10 meals or 12 meals based on what they're looking for, right? And then here we also have our dashboards, our manual selections, and also the subscription management order so much more, okay? So very detailed by the way, and, and the UI, the layout looks amazing. And then here you can see that here is the core process. And here basically we have our landing page, sign up, email verifications, enter their address, select the plans, payment setups, and then after they uh, became a customer, right? Here is the dashboard. So dashboard has different menus, order reviews, and the, there is a subscription management, order histories, billing centers, user profile, and so much more. So overall, I feel like this is um, you know a lot better compared to other doc writer because it's so visual, right? You have your mermaid visualizer where it shows everything right in front of you rather than you have to tell it to basically generate it. It basically automatically generate this for you, right? And here you can see that there's also the user interface design as well on how it's gonna design this. What are the colors? What are the button style look like? And this is the page design overview. Uh, it has everything already, right? And the business rules, performance, notifications, and so much more, okay? So I, I would say that based on this design, it's definitely better than a lot of those AI models that I see. Given the price that's only like $3 per month, the results are amazing here. So let's take a look at the technical architecture here. So technical architecture, if I were to scroll up, this is the overall architecture design, right? So user browser, front end, backend layer where we have maybe like a Redis cache, maybe like a Express.js backend, which basically can be able to use the Stripe API, the Sangris email service, or maybe using like different API for the uh, delivery, right? There's also the data layer for database. Uh, let's see if we can actually be able to see this. So if I were to move it over here, you can see that we have our Superbase database, okay? So pretty much you can see that these are the technologies we're gonna use. So in terms of front end, back end, database, cache, payment system, and so much more. We can also be able to change this as well. So for example, we're not using this. For example, I can be able to add this to the chat saying that uh, we are not using delivery team for this. So here, if I were to send this request, it's gonna update the technical architecture documentations to remove the Canada Post API because it has referenced that in multiple places. And here you can see that after I send this request, you can see that it's able to identify those things versus it's gonna read through those two documentation that it creates or on where exactly it's gonna make those changes. And it's actually creating a to-do list, right? So same thing like the claw code, it actually makes a list of things that it's gonna do. So here you can see it's gonna remove this, it's gonna update this, it's gonna modify this. And at the end, it's gonna review and update any other references related to the Canada Post throughout the documentation. So here you can see that it's making those changes after it created to-do list. And one by one, it's going to complete all the things that it mentioned here. And here you can see all five tasks are completed, which now we have the updated version of the architectures as well as here you can see it lists out the key changes. So once we have this, let's review this all together again. Here you can see that this is what, this, the red is before, right? And the, uh, the green one is what we have now, which is a little bit different compared to this one, but at least you can see that we have everything more detailed, right? With the, you know, backend, like the menu service, different types of services. And, uh, but at least, you know, we don't have the Canada Post service from the external services tab. So that's a good thing. And uh, in terms of the technology descriptions, right? So we have these things. So in this case, we have our internal, uh, you know, post office or anything. So I see that we can be able to turn this off to show the difference so that we get the most updated version if we don't want to see the diff at the same time. So here you can see we have our route definitions. So that's the technical architecture doc, right? So these are different routes for the backends. And then here we have our API definitions. So here you can see this is a post request, right? And here you can see this is a request body and uh, this is the response that we're looking to get. And here is the address validation. So, you know, this is the request and this is the response that we're looking to receive. And here you can see that it actually gives you, you know, this is the input, this is the output for the API, which lists out exactly how it works, right? And in terms of the server architecture, right? So how does it work? 
uh, this is the data model, right? So we have different tables for how, you know, the relations between the tables and tables, right? We can list out here. And I noticed that this is a mermaid, but we can also change that to different one. So let's say if there's like a better, even better um, way to visualize this, we can actually change that as well. So I'm not gonna change it. I'm gonna stick with mermaid because it actually looks a lot better. So here, I'm just going to scroll down here. You can see we have our table definitions on how we're gonna use the SQL query to basically create those tables. And here you can see we have multiple tables here. Uh, I'm not gonna look into much in detail, but at least you can see that we do have everything in the entire plant laid out. But obviously if you're trying to build a project for this, it's probably ideal to look through these technical architectures before you execute it. But if you're satisfied with the documentation that it creates, you can start to tell Solo Builder here to execute or implement this project. So here I'm just gonna say, please implement this project. So let's see what it does here. So now you can see that it's gonna to start to implement the Fitbox meal delivery subscription web applications based on the documentations that we have created. And this is gonna be a empty project to start. And here you can see that it's gonna jump back to the terminal here, try to build this project in the terminal. And here you can see that it's gonna install the package, everything all from scratch inside of our solo builder, which is amazing. So in that case, let's wait for a bit until it's fully done with the terminal work. All right, so now you can see that it fully installs everything and let's take a look at what it does here. So here you can see that it's looking through the documentations and here is going to create a to-do list. So let's see what it does here. So initialize a backend framework, set up the database and check the permissions. So pretty much everything is try to implement the projects from, from the back to the front. And let's scroll down a bit. You can see that it's completed for the task one, which is set up the backend frameworks. And here you can see it is asking us to connect our Superbase project configurations to set up the projects. So here I'm just gonna click on connect. And here you can see that it's gonna basically authenticate it to basically connect our Superbase. So here I'm just gonna click on connect Superbase. And here in that case, I'm just gonna log in with my Superbase. But of course, before I connect it with Trey, I also wanna make sure to create my organization in Superbase. So here inside of Superbase, I go to dashboard slash new and here I can be able to create a new organization. So here I'm just gonna give a name called Fitbox Tray. And here I'm just gonna start with a free plan here and create an organization from here. All right, so after I create my organizations, I can be able to generate a password. And here I'm just gonna copy that password, make sure to save it somewhere. Here I'm just gonna create that project. And here inside of the API access for Tray, I'm just gonna select that organization, authorize Tray. So in that case, let's wait for a bit until it fully authenticate itself. All right, so now you can see that the Superbase are connected with the projects. So here you can see, and what we can do is that if we were to click on the connect here, here, I'm just gonna click on this. You can see that we can be able to actually click on connect to basically connect our Superbase account with the project. So here you can see that we have uh, connected, right? So please continue building. So now you can see the project is ready for the Superbase connections. It's gonna implement the full application features now. All right, so after it's connected the changes, start implementing changes now, you can see that it started to create a schema, right? So that's the first thing is try to do the data migrations. And here you can see that it's inserted some data. So it's creating the table here. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna click on run to basically do the initial schema migrations. But eventually here you can see that it starts to um, complete some tasks after the data migrations. So you can see it starts to build a signup page, the applications, the dashboard, the menu, as well as the descriptions, the order histories, everything, right? So so after it starts to build the entire applications, all the pages, now you can see that it gives you the command that you can run in terminal to run the application. So usually because I stop the application after it successfully built. So here you can see, um, usually if you have this built um, on once, it will start automatically run this command automatically on your terminal. So here I'm just gonna open the terminal tab here and run this command. Here you can see that the application is currently running. So now if I were to navigate to that page, here you can see that this is what the web application looked like. So here you can see this the landing page and we have our nav bar, right? We have our sign in, we have our get started. And here inside of our get started, this is the multi-step sign up process. Or we're gonna simply just create our account. So here I'm just gonna simply input my email address, for example, eric at example.com. And I'm just gonna create a password and then click on next. And then here I'm just gonna provide the personal information for the multi-step signups. And here I'm just gonna provide the address. So here I'm just gonna provide the street address the city is already set. And then here we have our postcode and here is the preferred delivery day. So we have our Sunday and also Wednesday options. So here I'm just gonna click on this and here we can be able to provide the emergency contact info. 
So for example, I can be able to provide Eric and I provide another phone number here just to make sure. And then here, we're just gonna click on sign in. And here you can see that we can be able to choose our plan. So we have different plans that we can choose from, right? So here, I'm just gonna choose one of the plan here. And then here I can be able to click on if I want to select any uh, dietary registrations. In that case, I'm just gonna click on accounts. And then what's really cool for Superbase here is that you can see it is actually sent a verification email to my email address. So here I'm just gonna check my email inbox to get the verification code. Awesome, so here you can see that I get the confirmation for the signups. So here I'm just gonna click on confirm for the mail. You can see that I am navigated back to the dashboard, which I can be able to see and be able to play around with inside of my browser, or I can also be able to play around with this inside of the IDE browser as well. So here I can be able to provide the logins and then I can be able to log into the application as well, okay? All right, so now inside of our application, here you can see this dashboard, right? So here you can see we have a couple of things like the next delivery date, the menu release date as well. And here you can see we have some actions that we can select for to select the meal. So here you can see that we can be able to choose the meal that we wanna select. So I can be able to check. And here you can see that these are the meals that we selected. We can also save our selections, right? So last save at this time. And here you can see there is a timer on the selection for the deadline. And then here you can see, we also can be able to come back, be able to view the order histories. Uh, what are the things that we ordered? And here you can see currently out for delivery, preparings. You can see that all the orders have been tracked here, okay? Here you can see if we were to go back to the dashboard, we can also have the ability to manage the subscriptions, the billing payments, and you, you can see that there's a section for the subscription status as well. So pretty much everything that we want here is all here, okay? And of course, we can also change our profiles, right? We can be able to change our names. And obviously you can see that these are all default data, which I don't think that is sync with the actual data that we input. But of course, that could also be a good example to demonstrate inside of the tray IDE to make those changes. And to do so, I simply just use the selector here to select the element that I want to change. So for example, let's say if I want to change the menu bar, for example, I can select this, add it to the chat and basically select the element on the page and saying that currently I'm not able to select any meals, for example, please fix. And you can see that it's able to automatically fix that change. And what I also want to show you here is that you can actually have the ability to deploy this change. So here you can see that I have mentioned to deploy the current project. So basically what happened here is that it's going to deploy this change to Vercel itself. And then here you can see it create a to-do list and it's going to do this one by one, installing the CLI and then be able to do the logins. And after I follow those instructions, I was able to deploy this change onto Vercel with this application. And here you can see, this is the link that I deployed to, which here you can see this is the Fitbox application. And here is the meal plan for the price, the uh, landing page, everything, right? So we can actually be able to log in. So here I'm just gonna log into the application. So here you can see that I just logged into the application and this is what the application looks like inside, which is exactly what we saw. We have our order histories, we have our meal plans that we can select the meals. So pretty much that's what we have so far, right? So pretty much you can be able to build a full stack applications with Trey for the solo builder, which here you can see we have the browser view, the terminals, the uh, code editors, as well as the doc viewers, and even the integrations like the Superbase. Even you can later integrate this with your any other AI services, all in one single IDE called Trey. And I do have to say that the pricing here is really, really amazing, which for the pro plan, which is $10 per month, you get pretty much unlimited access for the advanced models. And for the fast request, it's limited down to 600 requests per month and unlimited slow requests for the premium models as well. So pretty much that's how we can be able to use Trey for the solo builders to build the entire full stack application that I have demonstrated in this video. All right, so now if you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.